Argmates, bootleg Salmonella here, and today we're going to be talking about YouTubers. Now we all know that every YouTuber has their own canon events. Like don't ask PewDiePie what happened at that PUBG bridge. Don't ask Mr. Beast what the Goon Clown rabbit hole is. And whatever you do, do not ask Logan Paul what happened in that forest at Japan. Or why it took him years to refund CryptoZoo. Or what happened to his pet pig, or what happened to his pet bird, or what happened- So yeah, as you can tell, the Paul brothers are no strangers to controversy. But regardless, they still became massive names on YouTube, and the White House wanted in on this popularity boom. So in January 2017, President Obama invited Jake Paul to an event at the White House, where he was allowed to film and vlog everything during his travels. Keep that in mind for later. Now any ordinary person would want to be very careful with this opportunity, because the literal president was going to be watching your back. But suddenly, a nefarious, no, even despicable scheme popped into Mr. Paul's mind. He was going to troll the president. Jake planned to break into the White House and stay overnight for a 24-hour challenge. Literally everyone here is vlogging. They're just like, oh, we're at the White House. I'm sleeping in it, bro. I'm sleeping in it. So in this event, Jake Paul just started normally. He was filming his daily vlog as usual, where he started by filming a speech by Joe Biden, which talked about sexual harassment for some reason. And after another secondary speech ended, Jake Paul snuck away from the crowd and went up the stairs to go hide in the bathroom. Alright guys, stay tuned. You're going into this bathroom. Now you would think one of the most important buildings in the United States, no even THE most important building in the United States, would have enough security to handle one YouTuber sneaking in. But nope, he stayed in the bathroom until 3 a.m. that night. Eventually, Jake Paul began to realize that this was an extremely dangerous stunt, and he began to panic and call his mother, who obviously told him it was a terrible idea, and the FBI would probably come after him for this. After traumatizing his poor mother, Jake Paul realized that he had to get out of there before morning, or he would get caught. And so he just kind of walked down the stairs in plain sight before walking out the exit. I'll be real honest, I don't know how to get out of here. After his very poor quality heist, he made it out in the freezing cold early in the morning of January 6th. He eventually ended up getting spotted by the Bruh. Secret Service who were waiting outside for him. But they did absolutely nothing for some reason. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god. So he was able to leave the property and brag that it was the best vlog he had ever released on the channel. Of course, after he published footage of this literal crime onto the internet for clout, he eventually did get caught by the feds, which off topic, but I love how this thumbnail says, THEY TRACKED ME DOWN, in all caps, like as if he didn't expect that to happen. Like as if he didn't make dozens of vlogs showing off his giant mansion, where he literally did a house tour of it. Yeah, no surprise the FBI found you. Eventually, on January 7th, 2017, Jake Paul was informed of this FBI raid by none other than Nick Crompton who stated that even President Obama had become aware of the situation at this point. But since Jake Paul was at a hotel in Vegas at this time, he was able to casually avoid arrest. He's texting me right here. The Secret Service is at our house right now, this is not a joke. He also managed to avoid being tracked down in Vegas by turning off the location on his phone. But he was speaking at an event at the time, so it's not like he was going in stealth mode or anything. Jake Paul eventually caved and made a phone call with a secret service member who predictably got mad at him because, well, he literally broke into the United States Capitol. This is uh, Jake Paul. Hello, Mr. Paul. We just wanted to, we, we saw your video on the, 
on YouTube there. And, uh, I'm a little teddy bear. Uh, but after Jake Paul got home on January 10th, he was still forced to go to a meeting with the Secret Service, where pretty much nothing happened again. But after that meeting, the Secret Service came to his door and they asked him questions. These questions were so funny, apparently, that Jake described it as the funniest thing he has ever seen in his life. Now that must be pretty funny. And after that, absolutely nothing happened to Jake Paul, with his only other recorded insurrectory activities including his involvement with some random riot in 2020. Now surely after this strange turn of events, the government would learn from this and stop the issue of security literally allowing random people to roam the capital, right? Right? Well, perhaps as Jake Paul's dad, Greg Paul, put it, you should be thanking him. He found the flaw in your f***ing <coughs> system, but tragically, history's greatest profits are too often ignored. <laughs>